Welcome to my channel where we discuss everything and all things politics, economy and development in Nigeria and around the world. By now all of us are aware of the tragic death of the former CEO and founder of Access Bank, his wife Chizaba and the son Chizi. I'm talking about Herbert Onyewumbu Uigwe. His tragic death with his wife and son left Nigeria and Nigerians dumbfounded. But if the testimonies that has been coming out from people's mouth about his character since his death is anything to go by. If it is left for human being to determine who goes to heaven, you can be sure, rest assured, that how about we will, will be in heaven. But only God knows who will be in heaven based on the criteria that he gave for us to be in heaven. And even if we are to look at that, because he is a Christian, he supported the body of Christ. That's also having accepted Christ as his Lord and personal Savior. That is a ticket to heaven. But at the end of the day, only God knows during the time of resurrection and judgment day. But look at the testimonies that people have been given about him. You find, you will discover that this is a man who loved humanity. You can see that he was loyal to the body of Christ. His contribution to the church was enormous. And he was not shouting about it. And if you go to the secular world, his contribution to mankind was enormous. He was loyal to a fault, if you like. You heard what the Emir, former Emir of Kano, Sanisu, Lamid, Salisu, uh, uh, Lamido, Sanusi, Lamido, Sanusi, what he said about Uigwe how loyal he was to him as a friend. He narrated everything to the level that he was saying in the trust he created, he had in mind that he would die before we were. And he was so confident that if he dies without leaving Kobo, that we were, would not abandon his children. That was the level of confidence people who knows this man had in his character. The same thing was also, kind of story was also told by the Africa's richest man, Ali Kodangote, and so many others. There was a, a story by the NDLEA, National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, that, that I, I was amazed. It was a story how we were donated a large parcel of land in Port Harcourt and give it free of charge to the NDLA so that they could build their barrack in Port Harcourt. That was how selfless this man was. So, but there are other takeaways from it. The takeaway from it is that you can see that the elite are really one family, irrespective of ethnicity and religion. You could see how pain Sanusi, Lamido Sanusi, was that his friend died before him. You could see that if there is anything that Sanusi could do to bring him back, Sanusi would have done that. 
You could, have, you could also say that if there's anything Dangote could have done to bring this man back with his family, with the wife and son that died, he would have done so. You see how, you saw how uh, on the night of tributes, how uh, Dangote named the biggest, longest road leading to his father, to his uh, refiner, we were, we were, uh, about we were road. To show you that the elite can cooperate. But why is it that this cooperation of the elite has not been taken down to the ordinary man in the street? It is because of our politicians. Our politicians create divisions using religion and ethnicity. If you check Nigeria today, some of the most divisive characters are not businessmen. Some of the most divisive characters are not professionals in various professional bodies. The most divisive characters in Nigeria are the politicians and their enablers. They are the ones that pitch south against the north. Ibo against Hausa, Ibo against Fulani, Ibo against Yoruba, Yoruba against this and that. This, these are the elite in our politics that create all these divisions. You could see that at the top there, the business people, they value each other. They know the heart of everybody. I was amazed by some of the things that Lamido Sanusi, Lamido, the former enemy of Kano said about Uwe and their relationship. Look at when he was narrating about the fact that uh, two years ago, he gathered out his savings and created a trust. And the person he brought to create the trust for him was uh, a senior advocate of Nigeria, Paul Osa. You can see, he didn't say that he wanted to look for a lawyer from Kano or from Shokoto to put this trust together. It was Paul Osa he gave it to. And Paul Osa created this trust. And you can see, in that trust, he created, he says, for students' education. And uh, he said something profound. He said, he reminded we were in their, I think, in their first meeting on that matter, that he trusts him that if he, Samsi, could die tomorrow, dies tomorrow without leaving a penny, that we will not abandon his family. And Sanusi was right. We will not abandon his family if he got to that. But unfortunately, for we were, we were died before Sanusi. And like Sanusi said, and said he, he did that, believing that we, he would die before we were. And why is it that Sanusi was so sure that we were, would take care of his family? Because Sam, uh, Wigwe has already exhibited that character before. When he was dethroned as the Emir of Kano, Wigwe was there for him and his family, brought them to Lagos and made sure they are comfortable. Now, these are people of different religion, different ethnicity. That is a lesson for Nigerians that we should stop allowing politicians, the divisive politicians, many of them with their agents on social media, on Twitter, on Facebook and elsewhere, we should not allow them to destroy this country. There is a lot going on in this country between ordinary people, between ordinary people, 
than what the politicians are making us to believe that division is too high. The creation of division at the run up to every election, they create division and insist that people from this area can never be president. People from this area, we can consider them, but it is not yet there at all. And move to the place where we say, this man is the best to run this country, irrespective of his ethnicity or his religion. Let the, the best man be in charge. You can see Sanusi exhibited it when he was looking for a lawyer to create a trust. He had confidence that Paul also would do the need for, would do the right thing. He didn't bother about Paul Osoro's religion, his ethnicity. It is to get the job done so that his children will be well prepared in terms of education for the future. And that is the mentality that I expect every Nigerian to learn from Sanusi's tribute to Wewe and his son and uh, wife that died in that unfortunate plane helicopter crash in the United States. If there is anything that I want Nigeria to take away from this, they should study Sanusi's tribute and learn. Thank you for watching this video. And if you are new to my channel and you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the subscription button, hit the notification bell. When you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell, anytime I have a new video, you'll be among the first to know. God bless you. And please don't forget to like this video because when you like it, God will rank it high and recommend it for more people. Thank you and God bless you and yours.